Hello, hello, hello. It's October the 5th. There we go. Not locked now until the 50th anniversary. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, um, I've had a number of people uh, send me a load of questions again. I've picked out six this time and tried to link them together to make some sort of theme. Uh, I hope it works for you. And I'll just start off straight away. So the first question is from Angela. What are you doing for the 50th anniversary? <laughs> Right, uh, on the 23rd of uh, November, which of course is the 50th anniversary, I'm going to be at City World in Crawley, uh, and I shall be delivering my uh, one-man panel show called My Dalek as a Puncture. And uh, talking of 50th anniversary, any fan vids that have not yet contacted me, then it's too late. Uh, I've done all I can for everybody, uh, but I'm busy now and won't really be available to do anything until after the new year. So, uh, no more 50th anniversary requests, please. I don't want to let people down, but um, it's been great fun. And the lesson for those who are leaving it too late is don't procrastinate. Uh, is that a poet and he didn't know it? I don't know. Yes, don't procrastinate. You should have asked me in July. Um, here we go. Um, question two. Um, how is SGC? SGC, for those who don't know, is my cat. Uh, and he was poorly. So those who follow me on Facebook will know he was poorly for a while. We had to go to a vet. Um, it turned out he had gastroenteritis, poor thing. And... Um, but uh, two or three injections later, he was running around chasing mice again. So he's back to normal and everything is hunky-dory. <laughs> uh, question three. Alan, you've mentioned my Dalek has a puncture. Please tell us more. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I mentioned it just now, of course. Um, my Dalek has a puncture is an autobiographical panel show. Uh, Normally at panels, for those who go uh, to conventions know there's somebody who interviews me, or if I'm with other people, interviews us, um, and then it's open to the audience for Q&A. &A. Well, in this case, in this show, I have a, um, a, a slideshow that's with various photographs, pictures, letters, goodness knows what, uh, giving an autobiographical account of my life right up to the point where I'm offered Dorian. And it also touches on... Um, uh, how and why I became an actor and uh, all the pitfalls and all the fun about it as well so the target audience of course is you guys Doctor Who fans but also to sci-fi fans in general um, and to, to drama students who've just left college uh, to give them the idea of uh, the way it is and uh, and the way it is is the name of another talk I give uh, with my agent Kim Barry and uh, we go around to colleges giving similar talks but uh, uh, my Dalek as a puncture is a bit of fun, a bit of banter, and uh, Q and A's from you guys. It runs for as long as you like, and it'll be at a venue near you. Uh, but on the twenty third of November, I will be at City World in Crawley. <clears throat> right, uh, question four, Josie. You're travelling around the world. How do you cope with jet lag? <laughs> oh yes, uh, the answer is I don't. <laughs> I just have to uh, jungle along at the moment because most of the visits are very quick and there isn't really much time to acclimatise. So I just find I'm having to function on fatigue all the time. Uh, and so the lesson I've learned is know, know what you're going to talk about because when you're really, really tired, uh, you haven't got time to think. You have to sort of work on autopilot some of the times. Uh, but it's... Oh, I do, do excuse me. Um, uh, it is all good fun. Uh, but I do walk around like a zombie half the time and thank goodness that uh, lots of the event, these events um, the guests get um, uh, the celebrity guests that is get chaperones because I can tell you I wouldn't know where I am half the time uh, dear um, Luke questions five uh, your room behind you seems very messy why is that I would agree it's untidy, but it's not messy. Uh, but it's just the way it's my filing system. I know exactly where everything is. Like for example, I absolutely know that there's an encyclopedia just over here somewhere. So if I were to turn around, I'd be able to find it and, uh, and grab hold of it. I also know that I have my town crier's bell in the wardrobe behind me. I don't have to, have to look or anything. I just know it's all there. Um, sorry, things aren't upright for you OCD members of the fandom. Um, but there you go. My room is clean. 
It is not messy, but I will agree that it is somewhat untidy. <laughs> uh, Alison, question six. What is it like meeting people from other countries? Uh, I, to be honest, it's absolute fun. Uh, it's very interesting to see how other countries perceive the UK, because of course we all think the UK is the centre of the universe, but I would say that's probably the same for the French. Uh, the French think France is the centre of the universe, and the United States, of course, are the centre of the universe. Um, uh, but it's very interesting seeing how people uh, perceive what's going on in the UK, um, and also how they can get things incredibly wrong. I remember in Salt Lake City, I had a conversation with a young lady who was frothing at the mouth because she absolutely disagreed with the idea of the National Health Service. And of course, in America, there's a big hoo-ha at the moment about uh, Obama trying to bring in some sort of health care package. Um, absolutely frothing at the mouth because she found it disgusting that the government could tell her where she goes for her operation. <laughs> well, of course... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the diplomat Matt, I am not, really, because I had to tell her that she was stupid. I said, what made you think that the government will tell you when? Yes, the government tells you where to have your operation. I said, no, no, no. The government doesn't tell me. My GP and my hospital tell me. Uh, no, the government, and this is going on, 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 and on, and on. And Tony and I experienced uh, about 10 years ago a similar thing. Uh, we were in Italy, and we were having dinner, and there were two... Uh, middle-aged ladies um, from America, uh, either side of us, who are absolutely convinced uh, that Wales is connected to Ireland. And no matter how much we try to persuade them, we drew diagrams on napkins and goodness knows what else, um, they absolutely wouldn't have it. And that we were wrong, that we didn't know that Wales was attached to Ireland. So it's amazing how people can grab the wrong end of the stick half the time and believe that they're right. <laughs> oh dear, well, uh, anyway, I'm off on my travels now. Um, I'm going down under, I'm going to Australia uh, and New Zealand, very exciting. So it's Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne and Auckland. And then I come back to the UK for two days and then I'm off to Rhode Island and Long Island in the, in the States. And then I'm finally back in the UK on the 12th of November. I shall try and keep up uh, doing postings and whatever. And I hope you all have a jolly good time over the next few weeks. Until then, goodbye.